That shit fire. Yo, 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 what up, man? It's Pie Sun Radio, dog. We back in the house for another special episode. I mean, they all special because it take a lot to even get this shit done. You better believe it. it ain't, I, podcasting ain't easy. I just make it look like that. That's my uh, motto. But uh, we back for a special segment, uh, Pie Sun doing business. Y'all ain't seen that in a while. We got a young future mogul in the house. Real young dude. He done, done a lot of things. We ain't going to tell y'all just who he is right now. First, we're going to give a shout out to everybody that's been rocking with us. Shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to uh, Famous Cup Barbershop. Shout out my man, Out of Town Capo. Shout out I Repair Mobile. Shout out everybody that's been fucking with your boy, helping us get to the next level. Because, you know, we do this for real. I, we say uh, 100 down and a lifetime to go. But so the man that I brought in here today, he's a young, uh, he's a grown man. But I tell all the people that's young, like 21, 22, 23, you still a baby. You know what I'm saying? But he done already done a lot more than niggas that's 40 years old. So um, I want to introduce y'all to my man, DJ Ware. We got DJ Ware in the house. What's good with you, man? What's going on, man? Appreciate you for having me. Man, likewise. First question, have you ever done a podcast? Uh, it's actually my first one. Beautiful. Ever. Shine moment. Well, I'm happy because you're going to do a lot of them, dog. So the motherfuckers who ain't got you yet, they were sleeping on you. Remember the nigga, the first nigga that was born? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Of course. All right. So um, we obviously going to talk a lot of business. And I usually start on the life, but we're going to start with business. So. The man is 22 years old, you know what I mean? And he's already running definitely the biggest entertainment company in Ari in fucking Arizona. And they do the biggest shows. They do everything the biggest. So shout out to Urban AZ. But so I want to talk to you. At what point did you feel like, because you're still young as hell, you was ready to take on right now co-ownership, but you the fucking owner, you know, they come in, in the future. At what point did you feel like you was ready to take that on? So I'll, actually, I'll started when my 18th birthday party. I just want to do something epic. So I threw a little party at Slavery Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, it was packed. Yeah. Like people couldn't get in. Like was, it was ridiculous. So that's when I knew I was like, okay, maybe like, maybe I could do this. Yeah. Then I started learning from my dad. He kind of teach, started to teach me everything. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, like this is something like I could really do. And I started to enjoy it too. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's dope. So wait, your 18th birthday party. So did you, who did you book for your 18th birthday party? Who you have come out or was it just your party? It was just a party. Straight up party. And you had the celebrity theater packed up. Yeah. All right. We're going to give you your first shine moment. Because what's that? Like a 3,000 seater venue or something like that? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> All right, man. That's fucking major. All right. So talk to us about like what made you at this party? Like, was there a specific moment where you looked around? And he was like, oh, like, did you do all the promotion and inviting for that one at that time? So it's kind of like a last minute thing. So, you know, back in the day where you have make your flyer with the notes. It was like maybe like a week before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just put it out. Then it just started getting a bunch of re retweets. and. Mm -hmm bunch of engagements and everyone's just talking about it because i think maybe at my age like no one like seen like a yeah. party at a venue gotcha. i even had like stuff like strippers and all this like ah! <laughs> nobody's seen that at our age so i was like okay nigga where the fuck was i man we gonna have to travel back in this bitch real quick all right so um when do you book like your first show show and you're like okay we're going all in like and who do you bring out i think my first show that i booked was um it was actually october 2015 it was futuristic my first shout out for you. Actually, I kind of feel bad because I was I was so new. I was so unprofessional. I really I thought I could like tell them like what songs to play and stuff. I'm like, that's not how it worked. <laughs> yeah, I try to apologize to them like the next day. You know, well, you yeah. told Futuristic was set to play. <laughs> yeah, I tried to send them a playlist. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I tried to apologize to him the next day. He never he never hit me back. I'm yeah. like, oh man. He's not, he ain't not fucking with me. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I right, keep going though. So how did the show turn out? It was actually, it turned out pretty good. Ended up making a decent amount of money. I think we did, um, we did it in the club area. So it was about like, capacity was like 500, ended up doing like 400. Nice. Trace move turned out for really first artist booking. Hell yeah. And at the time, what, 2015? That's futuristic to pack that out. That's fucking impressive because the greatest kind of really hit, like it wasn't 26, like late 2015, right? Like yeah, as I far as hit, yeah. hit. 2016, Yeah, you know, yeah. so so that's you was doing it big, bro. And um, what were the challenges at that time of promotion for you? Because obviously your father has a network, but I feel like a lot of black fathers make your ass work for that shit. And they like, nah, nigga, you gotta get out and get it just like I did. So what was the challenges for you as far as like promoting shows at that time, especially to somebody to that level at the time? I think the biggest challenge was just like probably I say like I was new, so no, I didn't really have too much credibility yet. Yeah. It's kind of hard getting people to True. help promote. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was really tough back then. Yeah. So I had to kind of be creative with what I was doing. Got you. 
Okay. And then um, I'm looking through your gram the other day, and uh, that's why I hit you up. And I was like, damn, nigga, run it the fuck up. Because you posted all them flyers of almost like a lot of the shows you've done and shit like that. So um, I want to just take from a couple of those. Who were some of your favorite shows or artists that you brought out? And I'm and I say that in the sense of, oh, before the fact. So you're like, oh, shit, we got this person coming. And then I want to know after the fact, who was somebody that you was like, damn, I didn't expect this shit to go this good. I'll definitely say it's going to be probably a shocker, but I'll probably say Khalid. Like when we booked him, we got um he was just kind of blowing up too. Yeah. Got him for a decent price. Like we no one thought that show was gonna sell out. I sold out in 30 minutes. This one location, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm pulling right. up for Khalid when location was hot. Oh yeah. Okay. That was definitely one of the top ones. That you also, didn't expect to blow and it just Yeah, I did not okay. expect at all. Another one is um I definitely say Daniel Caesar. That was another sellout. Sorry, moment. That was that was a crazy concert. Um it was kind of it was funny because he came out with some basketball shorts like you never seen all this basketball shorts. Like, he comes for really you. Shit I've seen in my life. <laughs> Yo, shout out to him. That means he got money. I'm telling you, nigga, come out that comfortable. You don't need shit. You know what I mean? But all right. So, um, and then who were some of the people that you was like? And obviously, I know you brought out like Migos and shit like that. Y'all got fucking the baby coming. But who was somebody where you was like, before they came, you was like, damn, this shit about to do numbers, boy. <laughs> hey, yo. Besides Migos, um, I definitely say, and there's so many people like, I brought it's hard to it's hard to think. Yeah. Um, who else did like yeah, I brought crazy future. Nah, okay. nah, 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 not yet. I definitely say probably probably Kalani. Does Kalani a boogie with the hoodie? Yeah. Amina and Cap G probably. Yeah. That show did some good numbers. Man, that's fucking that's a big ass show. Um, I feel like you got a good networking sense. Do you ever like network with the artists, or you just be like, oh, here your money, get the fuck out of here? Like, how do you uh, deal sometimes with it? it it really depends on their vibe. Yeah, because some artists like they don't like they kind of look at you as like, oh, this thing. Yeah. So it just it just really depends. Yeah, I feel that. Most nah. of the time, I'm just like, here's your money. Do the show. Let's get on. Let's keep it pushing. Yeah, and at that point, your pride might come out like, nigga, we booked you. Fuck. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, is there ever anybody that y'all booked where it didn't go good or the show flopped or anything like that? Have you ever had experience like that? Um, we haven't had a flop yet, but we did have a couple struggles. One was um, I say Twenty One Savage. It's it's complicated. I'm really? Not go, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. It wasn't really. There's just a lot of behind the scenes Got you. bullshit that happened. But yeah, just that was kind of a struggle. We had to give out a lot of free tickets, and people like people think I'm crazy for giving a lot of free tickets. But it's like we want people here, nigga. Yeah, like, and it's like we do this the same reason the clubs letting people for free. Like we all make money off the bar. Parking, yeah. Bunch of other revenues. Yep. Smart. Look, bro, to be 22 and to be able to look at every avenue of how you can make money, because most people only look at ticket sales yeah, when they look at promotion. I threw my first show when I was 25, and that's all I thought about was ticket sales. So that's the only thing that I contracted. I didn't ask for nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Nowadays, you can't you can't just go off ticket sales. Artists be wanting too much. Mm-hmm. You definitely need to get to everything if you want to. Want that longevity. Yeah, no, nah, man, I, bro, I'm telling you to hear that from you. And I'm sure, obviously, you seasoned because your pops did it. But hearing that from you is motivating, bro. And it's crazy to say, I don't even like a lot of young niggas. But I like you, man. You got a good, Shit, you got man. good energy, your hustle, your ambition, and you're very humble. I'm sure that sometimes you like, I'm going to kick shit up on these niggas real quick, let them know oh where God, I come so from. Many, <laughs> so many times, I see a bunch of people that are like, I know that I haven't done, like, close to shit as me. And they just like, so like arrogant. I'm just like, come on, man. Like. <laughs> You don't, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, don't know. Don't have a motherfucking clue in the yeah, world. No sense. Okay, um, let's see. See a little bit more about the promotion, and I want to kind of, uh, or not promotion. Sorry about Urban Az, and then I kind of want to talk about your personal life. And the reason I say I'm sorry because I don't equate those even close. Like niggas throwing a show versus Urban Az got such and such coming out. That's some official shit, you know. And that's just how I look at it, being an Arizona kid. So shout out to y'all and everything. But um, do you have like girls who want? And I go through this myself. People want access to shit. I don't even got access to. Do you ever have like girls or niggas who like, yo, man, can I come through and uh, maybe just get backstage or do such and such? Like, can I meet such and such? You ever went, had any experiences like that? Man, all the time. It's, it's so annoying. You just see some of the girls be losing their morals trying to get backstage. Just, oh, my goodness. Like, it's, it's crazy. 
But yeah, I can't see. And when I was 22, I was a dirt back, so I probably was like, shit, you can get back here if you top me out. And I don't even know that he, it is my show, so this type of stuff I talk about. But um, I go through it myself because like when I just did the Master P interview, bro, I went in my DMs. I had a few DMs. Motherfuckers told me, yo, I need to talk to Master P. I said, nigga, what? <laughs> I, was, yeah. I had never heard nothing like that in my life, but now I'm like, damn, I know niggas who do this shit at this level. They be dealing with a lot of bullshit from motherfuckers that know them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. like, so that's the only reason I wanted to ask that question. All right, um, do you, I'm gonna ask this before I ask this wild question because we always go left field. I'm a real nigga and I'm still got some of them dirt back tendencies. You know what I mean? So do you have a girl before I ask this question? Nah, I don't. All right, do you ever have you ever hit one of them groupies and it was like, fuck it, nigga, she bad. I'm tagging her ass. Oh uh, nah, cause nah. <laughs> Damn near the whole time I've been doing this. I, most of the time I had a girlfriend. So got you. So nah. <laughs> oh, but now you but now you single. Oh yeah. Oh, so it's about to happen tonight. <laughs> yeah, it might. <laughs> man, I'm gonna fuck with you, man. I got I got a couple of them that probably yo, I'm telling you, they like your niggas too. But all right, so um let's talk a little bit about your personal life. So you're from Arizona. Where did you uh go to high school at? I went to high school at first at Mount Point, then went to Chandler. Okay. So um I'm guessing you must have played sports because most people don't move on from Mount Point to Chandler. Unless they play sports. Oh, yeah. I ran track and I play football, too. All right. Perfect. So we got something to talk about. So oh, yeah. was you nice at football or was you a bench rider? I think I think I was nice. Yeah. yeah was did the nice. coach think you was nice? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How did what position did you play? And then talk about some of your accomplishments with uh, football and then going to track, too. We always we want to know, you know, where niggas come from, how they got down. So I mainly played cornerback. I played a little bit running back, did a little bit kick return. Mm-hmm. I said my accomplishments for football, we won a state championship. Woo, shy a moment. Talk that shit there. Track, we won a state championship my freshman year. And nigga, shy moment winning, again. I ended up winning the 100 meter state dash championship. Nigga, shy. Whoa, nigga, we about to race when we go outside. Keep going. Those are my accomplishments. Oh, and I'm um, getting a scholarship to um, run check at University of Arizona. Bruh, I know you humble as fuck because I'm good at energy and I can usually read motherfuckers' eyes. So when I asked you, I was like, nah, this nigga probably was all right. You know what I'm saying? But if you kind of downplay your accomplishments, that's dope, bro. Like, humility is going to take you further than anything. So keep that spirit about you, bro. I couldn't even, usually when I, if I ask a nigga, yo, was you nice? I can see him kind of perk up or slouch down. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Like, you was kind of even killed, but this nigga won the 100 meter dash state championship. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So I guess that leads me to another question. Did you end up taking any of those scholarships? I ended up going to U of A for a little bit for track, mm -hmm. and I ended up rupturing my Achilles. So I was just like, eh, it's not. Then at the time, I was kind of falling out of love with track. So I'm just like, gotcha. it's not, not for me. Yeah, I, I have a bone for you. Don't fit. Gotcha. That's what Drake said, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I fucked with a couple of tracks. I did Maurice Green. He was the fastest nigga in the world at one time. He said, right there where you said, Will Clay. I fucked a lot of well, Maurice Green, not from Arizona, but it's some niggas from Arizona that's doing their thing in track. Right, we'll you know? play short, do yeah. Thing. All right. So a couple more um questions about high school. You said you had a girlfriend for a long time. Was she a high school sweetheart of yours? Nah. Okay. What was your high school life like? Like, was you uh was the girls clamoring after you back then, or was it more of like, man, I'm focused, I don't even want to hear none of that shit? It was kind of kind of kind of both, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Like, I was more focused on just like Athletics at the time mm -hmm. wasn't really caring too much about two main girls. I wasn't really trying to be player. Like, yeah, I wasn't really like I think back in the day. Yeah, you know? but y'all winning all these state championships, they kind of gravitate to you without you having to open your be. fucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? All right, man, that's that's actually dope as hell. And now, what do you do when you graduate high school? Oh, you went to U of A. What do you do following U of A? Like, did you get your degree? Did you just say, you know, fuck, I'm getting back. I'm about to handle my own business. Like, how did you do that? So when I was when I was at U of A, I was still doing a little bit of conscious promotion. So right when um right when I tore my Achilles, that's kind of when conscious yeah, started to hear that. up. Business started booming a little bit. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna stick to this. I'm actually going back to school right now to get get a degree and try to get my marketing and yeah. entrepreneurship degree. But yeah, Sorry this moment. yeah, this conscious been picking up business been moving. So I just mm -hmm. stuck with that, just trying to proven scale urban AZ and everything yeah and you can see that's kind of probably what shaped you you know what i'm saying but um just to get and this is for the athletes what is it like tearing your achilles bro like oh it's terrible that shit takes forever to heal like, you think you're fine one day you try to go for a run and it just hits you out of nowhere you're just like, Ugh. it's like, the worst they say and i've only seen nba players have this um this specific injury but they say it feels like somebody kicked the shit out the back of your heel 
but nobody's there. Like, and then after that, it's just like gone. Like, what's that? Like, did you like? Can you not walk for a little bit? How how is that? Like, shit? It was it was hella tough to walk. Like, I just felt hella uncomfortable. But I had to tough it out though. So. Do you feel like? And I I know you don't haven't competed like on a team aspect. Do you feel like you're back to the same level maybe of athleticism? Uh, probably probably not. Got you. <laughs> it's been a minute, so yeah, definitely a little rusty. Nah, I feel it. But I mean, just as far as like when you on your legs, like do you are you do you still have spring? Like, can you move around and shit, or is it something that hinders you for? Oh life? yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely move around now. Definitely feels a lot better. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess I'm asking to figure out if Kevin Durant is ever going to be good again. But, uh, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, because now it's a serious fucking injury. And me being a big Kobe fan, that's the first time I ever seen that shit. You know, and he couldn't fucking walk down there afterwards. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? But all right. So, um, we'll stay a little bit more on a personal life. And then, um, at what point does your pops bring you in and shout out to your pops. I've never met him personally, but I've heard the name Derek Ware every fucking where. And to me, social media is cool. But when I hear you on the, sh- when I hear about you on the streets, I know for sure that you got it popping, you know, cause it's a lot of fraudulent bullshit that can go on with the internet and shit like that. But that word of mouth that he has blazing, nigga, it's just that it's blazing. So at what point did he bring you in and say, you know what, son, you, I feel like you can handle this. Like, let's get it. Um, let me think. So at first, I definitely kind of like had to like bug him about it. Like, okay, this is like what I want to do. We kind of, kind of like brushed off to the side because he knows like it's a headache business. So he's like, mm-hmm. oh, you don't, you don't really want. To. Yeah. So after a few times, I think I'll say after um after the first time we were at Migos, and that was with Lil Yachty and Ponce De Leon. I think that's how you pronounce the name. In 2016. That's when he was like, okay, yeah, like you start to really do this. Yeah. Start teaching me more. It's really put me on game. <sighs> I credit I credit him to everything I know. Yeah, really taught me everything. Definitely, I'm not just saying this because he's my dad, but he's yeah. definitely like the smartest, smartest promoter. Mm-hmm. Sean, I think. Yeah, and do you think um, being shaped by that? Do you think it's been harder for you to branch out on your own, or did it make it kind of more seamless? Because a lot of times when you're like the heir, people give you a fucking harder time just for that. You know what I'm saying? So how is that? I'll, it's definitely been a little bit easier and harder too, because mm-hmm. there's some people that are like some haters. It's kind of made it harder to kind of network, but also mm-hmm. made it easier too just with the, the names. Kind of easier to get indoors. Yeah, but I say mostly, probably mostly easier. Yeah, shine moment, and that's the reason I asked that because, like I said, I deal with Markel a lot, and I see him have to go through it. You know what I mean? But a lot of the times, or not even a lot of times in this game, you got to put your own work in, regardless of who your daddy is, who your cousin is, who such and such is. So I always try to bring attention to that because I hate when people Michael Jordan's sons wasn't in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like if you're not putting that work in, niggas, fuck it's you fucked pretty much. So I say that to the people that's watching. He had to do any just as much as probably his father did, or more. Cause nowadays it's a lot more of sharks in the water, a lot more bullshit you gotta do, a lot more competition. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, to true. just to put it bluntly, you know what I mean? So um that's most of what I want to talk about. Like I said, this is a special quick business edition, but I do still want to give you the uh, floor and um, talk about like any other goals you might have, any other business ventures you might be into. Let's say over the next five years, that'll be when you damn my age. You know what I'm saying? So talk about what you, anything else you want to get into, or even if it's just, you know, whatever you're doing now. So I'm actually cur- currently working on a nonprofit. It's called Youth Athletes in Motion, where basically it helps young athletes that can't afford like equipment, fees, etc. You also teach life skills that are typically taught in school and also mm-hmm. even help kids like set up a retirement account so mm-hmm. they're not really thinking about it at age. Yeah. That's one thing. Also I've been I've been taking DJ a little bit DJing a little bit more seriously. That's always kind of been a hobby. Oh yeah I've seen you doing that. Okay. And also um I also want to get into um kind of want to get into videography, even podcasting too. That's something I always wanted to do, but I just I just need to take the leap. Nigga, let's get it. You you did it. Come fuck with your boy when you're ready for that. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. I promise you. Urban AZ should have a fucking podcast. Or even if it's just yours. You know what I mean? But truthfully, recap every event you do. Every fucking event. You know what I mean? From start to finish. Like, that's major, bro. So I'm going to say this. I think that you have... I know, obviously, you're doing good right now. But I think you have a limitless future. And that's why I really brought you through. Because I was like, you know what? This young dude... Obviously, I've been knowing about Urban AZ, but then I started watching you, and I was like, yeah, bro, 
he, he got it. You know, I, whatever it is, is a young dude got it. So um, at this point, I'll let you give shout outs, all that, you know, anything you want to talk about, really. And then we'll get the fuck up out of here, man. Definitely shout out to my pops again. That taught me everything I know. I shout out to um, I give a shout out to Cam Bennett and Freshmaker for teaching me a lot hey. about DJ, and they really they really put me on game. Taught me a lot of stuff I didn't even know. Shout out to um, shout out to my whole the whole Urban AZ team. Got Mercedes, Quasi, got my good friend Tamara, got my dude um, DJ Yours Truly. He started uh, mm-hmm. some things. Got I out. think I follow him. Okay, it yeah, is shout out to the whole Urban AZ team. Right, really man. would not be nothing without them. Man, 100%, bro. And like I said, your humility is what's going to take you the furthest, bro. And I really I admire all that. Because if I was 22 and doing what she was doing, wouldn't nobody be able to tell me a motherfucking thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the fact that you carry yourself like that is going to put you to the top, bro. Just just you don't never stop it. You know what I mean? Don't never change. But um, Well, change, but not that part of you. But uh, yeah, man, it's Pots on Radio. We have to bring y'all in for a special edition. Shout out to DJ Ware. Shout out to Urban AZ. We about to go chase some white girls, man. We gone.